Hi everyone, my name is Prayag. Today I'm going to tell you about privately estimating a Gaussian efficient, robust, and optimal. This is joint work with Daniel, Pravesh, Pranay, and Fred. So in this work, we consider the fundamental problem of learning a Gaussian. Here, the problem is given as input n IID samples from a d-dimensional Gaussian with unknown mean mu star and unknown covariance sigma star. We want to output estimates mu hat and sigma hat such that the TV distance between the true unknown Gaussian distribution and a Gaussian distribution with parameters imputed by our estimates is small with high probability over the draw of the sample. Now, while this is a very well-studied problem, and it's known that it can be solved with roughly quadratic in D many samples, we're interested in understanding how the complexity of this problem changes when we impose robustness and privacy constraints. For example, we're interested in how does either the computational or sample complexity of this problem change for algorithms that are either robust, private, or both. So the specific model of robustness we consider is what's called the strong contamination model. In this model, as before, n IID samples are drawn from some unknown Gaussian distribution. However, an adversary then swaps up to an eta fraction of these data points arbitrarily and replaces them with arbitrary outliers. Then the algorithm receives this modified set of samples, y equal to y1 up to yn, and then has to output estimates mu hat and sigma hat as before. For the model of privacy, we consider differential privacy. Roughly speaking, differential privacy asserts that for all data sets y and y prime, which differ in a single sample, it should be the case that the mechanism M, which outputs the estimates mu hat and sigma hat, should have output distributions which are close in the following sense on data sets y and y prime. Here, epsilon and delta are given to us and are called the privacy parameters. In this work, we consider both the pure DP model in which delta is equal to zero and the approximate DP model in which delta is positive. In addition to satisfying these two constraints of robustness and privacy, we also require our algorithm to satisfy some utility guarantees. In the first setting we consider, we uh, study the mean estimation problem where the unknown covariance matrix sigma star is actually known and without loss of generality, is assumed to be the identity matrix. In this setting, we want the estimate mu hat to be close to mu star in the two norm distance with high probability. The second setting we consider is that of covariance estimation. We no longer assume that the unknown covariance is known and we want to output an estimate sigma hat, which is close to the unknown covariance sigma star in this relative Frobenius distance. It's known that if one can solve these two problems, achieving accuracy guarantees in these two particular norms, then it's possible to satisfy the TV distance guarantee mentioned on the previous slide. So we are interested in solving or achieving these two goals with a sample complexity n, which is small as a function of d. In particular, the ideal scenario would be if we can match the sample complexity of the non-private and non-robust versions of these problems. Our first main theorem applies to the setting of approximate differential privacy and robustness. We show that there exists a polynomial time approximate DP algorithm, which takes n equal to roughly quadratic in D many samples and learns the unknown Gaussian to within TV distance roughly eta. Again, with high probability over the draw of the input data. Moreover, if we assume that the unknown covariance is actually known, and in particular is the identity, this sample complexity guarantee can be improved to roughly linear indeed. 
So just to give some context, the sample complexity and the error guarantees here are optimal, even if we remove the privacy and robustness constraints. It's also known that information theoretically, the TV distance guarantee here is optimal in the strong contamination model. Our second main result applies to the setting of pure DP and robustness. In this setting, we need to make some additional assumptions, information theoretically. Specifically, the assumptions are that we know a upper bound R on the norm of the unknown mean mu star. And we also know a upper bound kappa on the condition number of the unknown covariance sigma star. Given these two assumptions, we show there's a polynomial time pure DP algorithm, which takes, again, n roughly quadratic in D times log kappa many samples and learns the unknown Gaussian to within uh, information theoretically optimal TV distance. We also give a matching lower bound to show that this log kappa factor is essentially, um, is, is indeed necessary. So to place our results in a broader context of prior work, I'm showing you this table that summarizes sample complexity, privacy guarantees, and robustness guarantees for previous works that studied these problems. And to summarize everything concisely, prior to our work, there was no polynomial time algorithm, which achieved quadratic in D sample complexity, was private and achieved the optimal dependence on the, ro the robustness parameter eta for learning a high dimensional Gaussian. I'll also remark that concurrently and also appearing in this year's talk, uh, Hawkins, Kamath, Majid, and Narayanan gave essentially very similar results to what we achieved. To summarize again the significance of our result, we settled the polynomial time sample complexity of the fundamental problems of private and robust learning of high dimensional Gaussians. We demonstrate that essentially there are no significant sample complexity or computational complexity costs when imposing the constraints of privacy and robustness, at least in the context of this basic problem of learning a Gaussian. The second major significance of our result is that we give some interesting new techniques which are effective at solving general private learning tasks. Specifically, we use the sum of squares STP hierarchy. We give a substantial upgrade of what's called the method of stabilizing convex relaxations from previous work to achieve these optimal sample complexities. We also introduce this novel Gaussian sampling mechanism to privately release covariance matrices while achieving good utility guarantees. This part of the talk, I'll tell you about our techniques behind theorem one, specifically for the setting of approximate DP and robustness. Our first main technique involves the usage of the sum of squares semi-definite programming hierarchy. The output of this first step of our algorithm will be estimates mu hat and sigma hat, which satisfy optimal utility and robustness guarantees while also being low sensitivity. Here by low sensitivity, I mean that these estimates mu hat and sigma hat do not change much in certain norms upon changing one of the input data points. In order to achieve this, we will make use of an existing system of low degree polynomial constraints that was devised in the algorithmic robust statistics literature. Now, in order to achieve low sensitivity, we will rely on this technique of stabilizing convex relaxations from prior work. However, these, this prior work does not give 
uh, sufficiently good sensitivity bounds. So we will upgrade this technique by crucially using the unnormalized entropy function as a strongly convex regularizer. So having done this, in the first step, we would have computed estimates mu hat and sigma hat, which have good utility and robustness guarantees while also being low sensitivity. In the second step, we make these estimates private by adding random noise. The challenge that <clears throat> was encountered in previous work is that in order to privatize <clears throat> the covariance matrix sigma, sigma hat, the noise that needs to be added to sigma hat needs to depend on sigma hat itself. So in this work, we circumvent this issue by introducing this novel Gaussian sampling mechanism, which I'll tell you about next. So this Gaussian me sampling mechanism is a generic me mechanism, which takes as input some data y1 to yn and a function f, which can be applied to this data to produce a covariance matrix. The output of this mechanism is another covariance matrix. And the mechanism works as follows. First, the covariance matrix sigma is computed by invoking f on the input data. One can think of this f as just some generic function, but for our specific application, you should think about it as the function that encodes the output of the first step of our algorithm. In the second step of this mechanism, we sample G1 to GK, which are IID standard Ga IID Gaussian vectors from a mean zero Gaussian with covariance matrix sigma that we just computed in the previous step. Finally, we just output sigma hat, which is the empirical covariance matrix of these K samples G1 to GK. Here, K is a parameter which can be chosen by the user which I'll tell you how to choose in the coming slides. So to summarize this Gaussian sampling mechanism, basically generates K Gaussian samples from a Gaussian whose covariance matrix is itself sigma, and then just releases the empirical covariance matrix of those K samples. So in order to explain the utility and privacy guarantees of this mechanism, I'll need to make a definition. So let's define delta to be the relative Frobenius sensitivity of this black box function f. So given this definition, our sampling Gaussian sampling mechanism satisfies the following privacy and utility guarantees. The privacy guarantee asserts that the mechanism is differentially private, provided that the sensitivity bound delta is small enough. The utility guarantee asserts that the output of the Gaussian sampling mechanism is close to the input sigma in this relative Frobenius distance, provided that k is large enough. So essentially this mechanism gives a trade-off in terms of the parameter k. As k is chosen larger and larger, the utility guarantee of this mechanism improves. However, one requires delta to be smaller and smaller. So by choosing k appropriately for the application, one can balance these two constraints to achieve sufficiently good privacy and utility at the same time. So in this part of the talk, having told you how we privatize the output of the first step of the algorithm, I'll now tell you how to compute estimates mu hat and sigma hat, which have optimal utility guarantees, robustness guarantees, and also low sensitivity. To simplify the exposition, instead of focusing on joint mean and covariance estimation, I'm just going to tell you about the problem of mean estimation with a known covariance matrix equal to the identity matrix. So recall that the input is n 
samples y1 to yn. Recall that these are eta corrupted. They come from a Gaussian whose mean mu star is unknown. And we have some privacy parameters, epsilon and delta. So we want an algorithm which is going to satisfy the following guarantees. So first off, it should be the case that with high probability, our estimate mu hat is close to mu star, given roughly a linear ND number of samples. The second property we want in order to achieve privacy is the following sensitivity guarantee. It should be the case that for any neighboring data sets y and y prime, which differ in a single sample, the resulting estimate should not change to norm distance by more than roughly one over square root n. Finally, we want our algorithm to be efficient. That is, it should run in time polynomial in the input size. So in the following slide, I'm going to first tell you how to achieve the utility and robustness guarantees. In order to do this, we're going to make use of some prototypical robust estimator from the robust statistics literature. So the estimator works as follows. The estimator will search for a witness set S, which is a set of endpoints in RD, satisfying two properties. First off, the set S will intersect the original data set in a large fraction. And the second property is that this witness set must um, have an empirical covariance matrix, which is approximately equal to the identity. So having found such a witness set S, the algorithm will just return mu of S, which is the empirical mean of points in S. If no such witness set S exists, the algorithm will just reject. So it's a folklore result that this estimator will satisfy the utility guarantee that we want. That is, with a linear ND number of samples, mu of S will be very close to the unknown mean mu star with high probability. Now, this estimator satisfies our utility and uh, robustness goals, but it does not satisfy privacy. And it also is clearly not uh, an efficiently implementable, implementable algorithm. So now let me tell you about the privacy issues with this existing algorithm and how we fix them. So the first violation of privacy stems from the constraint that the witness sets S must intersect the original data set Y in some large fraction of, of data points. And the way that this is fixed is simply by randomizing this parameter eta according to some exponential mechanism-based procedure. This is more or less similar to something that was achieved in previous work, so I'll not talk too much about it. The major violation of privacy by this previous algorithm has to do with the fact that in general, there can be many feasible sets S and the algorithm is permitted to output any of them. So this leads to the output of the algorithm having a very large sensitivity. In order to fix this issue, what we'll do is we will compute an entropy maximizing distribution, which is supported on feasible sets, which can be encoded as solutions to a certain system of low degree polynomial constraints. So in this way, we are essentially forcing the algorithm to pick a specific canonical solution instead of permitting it to pick any feasible solution. In order to prove that this entropy maximizing procedure enforces sensitivity of the algorithm, we use a direct strong convexity argument to, to prove this sensitivity bound. Now, the algorithm as is satisfies utility, robustness, and privacy, but 
As is, it involves solving some exponentially large convex program. So in this slide, I'll tell you how we take this inefficient algorithm and turn it into a polynomial time algorithm. So the main observation is that solutions to this exponentially large convex program are distributions over solutions to a system of low degree polynomial constraints. If one traces through the analysis of the previous steps carefully, one will find that all these steps are captured by a restricted proof system called the sum of squares hierarchy. So we can exploit this observation by relaxing the solution space to what's called the set of pseudo distributions supported on solutions to the system of low degree polynomial constraints. It turns out that this set of pseudo distributions is described by the feasible set of a polynomial size semi-definite program. And because of this restricted proof system property, the same analysis that goes through before also holds when we work with pseudo distributions instead of distribution. So in this way, we can essentially re-implement the idealized inefficient algorithm, but using these uh, pseudo distribution objects and a polynomial size semi-definite program that we can optimize convex functions over efficiently. To summarize this work, we settled the polynomial time sample complexity of private and robust learning of high dimensional Gaussians. We showed that for this fundamental problem and in these fundamental models, there's essentially no cost of privacy or robustness with respect to either sample complexity or computational complexity. In other words, we were able to give polynomial time algorithms satisfying privacy and robustness constraints, which achieve information theoretically optimal sample complexity and error rates. In terms of techniques, we introduced this novel Gaussian sampling mechanism for privately releasing covariance matrices. We employed this convex programming framework to compute estimates mu hat and sigma hat, which simultaneously satisfy utility and sensitivity guarantees. And our work demonstrates a strong quantitative connection between robustness and privacy, again, demonstrating that there's essentially no penalty for achieving both of these simultaneously. So with that, I'll conclude the talk and thank you for your attention.